Hey sweet friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's video. I'm actually sharing with you all some really fun ideas to use the large wooden gingerbread houses from Dollar Tree that we didn't know what to do with and giving you some really fun inspiration. I feel like everyone got just super excited whenever Dollar Tree put out these gingerbread houses. They were so cute and I even grabbed a couple myself, but then after I got home, they were just hard to use. They had a ton of detail on them, they were hard to paint, and I figured that's what happened to everyone else because I haven't seen a lot of DIYs using these. So I thought it would be really fun to put my spin on it and show you guys how I ended up using these houses to bring you some inspiration. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed if you're not already. And then let me know in the comments down below if you've created something using one of these gingerbread houses. And let's leave some inspiration for everyone else, especially if you make something different than I have today. That would be so much fun to get to know what you ended up doing with them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into crafting and see how I ended up using these adorable little gingerbread houses. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about whenever I'm calling them gingerbread houses. It's just these little, like, natural wooden paintable houses, and I thought this was an awesome item for Dollar Tree to carry. I love all of the little DIY wooden pieces. But like I said before, I just didn't like all of those little details. It made it cute, but super hard to paint, so I knew I was going to have to flip this over and try to make my own version. I know that barns are super trendy right now. They kind of go along with the red truck kind of not but just really cute for rustic Christmas I wanted this to have um, a background and something better than what I could just paint with a solid background so I cut down a piece of Hobby Lobby scrapbooking paper but then I knew the bar needed to be red but I didn't have any red paper on hand so I was just trying to kind of brush over this gray uh, faux wood paper with some red paint this is in the Waverly chalk paint and it turned out beautiful so I loved it so much. It is such a beautiful color. I go ahead and glue that down on the barn and I didn't worry about getting the paint full coverage because I do like how it looks a little bit weathered and then glue this on there with a glue stick. I originally thought I was going to use these little tower blocks for the barn roof. I laid them out, even started to glue them together, traced on the outside so I could see what needed to be um, cut off of this barn, but I end up trading these out for popsicle sticks, and the only reason I do that is because they were wider, so they did hide more of like the uneven barn roof. So I did use my clippers to go ahead and cut off the edges, um, but if you didn't have that, you could just remove the double layer on the back so the wood wasn't so thick at the top and then just trim that down with scissors. These are the popsicle sticks I am choosing to use. They're kind of small but they are thicker than normal ones. I cut them down so the barn would have angles and I just felt like it fit way better than looking like the little tumbling blocks. I wanted to give this barn a wreath at the top so I put a garland tie around a paint bottle to give it a circular shape. I glued that down in place and then glued down the roof of the barn and then to make that look more like rustic wood I do take some truffle brown chalk paint and dry brush over that. I wanted this to really pop and look more like my farmhouse rustic decor, so I'm adding in a little black and white buffalo checked ribbon. Uh, this ribbon actually came from Hobby Lobby, and I just um, kind of crossed it over each other and tied it in the middle, and it just was so pretty, kind of being too big for that wreath, but I really like how it popped out, and I feel like this is really coming together. I added a little bit of snow around the wreath, and then I dabbed on some snow around the roof. I started off very light until I got a little bit more brave but I then I thought the more snow the better it looks so pretty especially whenever the um, paint was super thick and it had a little bit of a 3d texture
you could definitely take the time to make some barn doors that would just pop off of there and, and be really beautiful, but I decided to add the word just to make it look a little bit more like decor. I know that Walmart has out a little rustic barn that's bigger than this, and you just can't find a barn like this for $1, so it's super inexpensive and really, really cute. I glued everything down and kind of put the snow on the grateful so it all blended nice together and looked like everything had snow on it. And then I needed this to stand up, so I am using a wood plank from Dollar Tree used some of the tower blocks and glued them down behind the house and then tried to glue everything in place so that this would be freestanding and look more like a little barn. I think this turned out gorgeous and it's just so so beautiful for rustic Christmas. how the adorable barn turned out. It is just one of my favorite crafts this season. So I knew I wanted to keep going and try to make a house out of it. So that's what I'm making next. And it is just as cute as the barn, if not more. I'm not sure which one's my favorite. So let me know in the comments down below after you see. Tell me which one's your favorite. But I thought it'd be a really cool idea to keep expanding this and maybe make like a little village. Um, I ran out of time on this video, but wouldn't it be cool if you like cut out a little steeple out of cardboard and made like a church or a little bakery or some town shops? So you'll have to tag me on Instagram if you make these projects or make anything else out of them. But that would be like on a larger scale because they are bigger houses, but yet still be really inexpensive. So just a really cool idea. But let's go ahead and jump on into the house so you can see how cute that it turned out. Moving on to the house DIY part of this video, I'm using the same gingerbread house. Go ahead and flip it over and the tutorial of the beginning of this is pretty much going to be the same. I'm using some of Hobby Lobby scrapbooking paper. I decided to go more like white farmhouse for this little cottage house. I flipped it over and traced it and cutting this out. Even though I do make kind of the same, I use different techniques on this. Um, I decided to Mod Podge on this paper. I was nervous at first because it did look like it was going to wrinkle, but then the wrinkles dried and I didn't have any problems with it. But I love using Mod Podge. I feel like I get a better hold, but a glue stick um, is the safer choice if it will hold on the material that you're using because it will make it a little bit less wrinkled. Um, I know that this is white paper but I wanted to make it go with the barn as much as possible so I still packed on some of the white paint and I love that it brightened it up it made the lines and the white would not look so harsh so I really like that I went ahead and took the extra time to do that and then for the roof of this house it's not going to be like the barn it's not going to have so many angles it's just going to be a little triangle roof so I decided to use some of these wooden squares I have used these before using the wooden arrow and I loved how it turned out. It kind of made it look like shingles. So I decided to go um, that route for this roof. You can glue them alongside of a straight edge just to make sure that they are nice and even. Once again, I wanted the base to really coordinate with the house itself, so I go ahead and paint that white. I glue down my little roof to the top of this. I do push it up as high as I can get it so that it does cover the uneven roof. And then I wanted to actually not just put a word at the bottom, but actually create like a little door and some windows so that you can have different options. I'm using some of the giant popsicle sticks and I used the little wood as a guideline about so I could make the windows even. So I traced out little squares for the windows and then left two longer rectangles for the door. And then I'm using a little wooden heart for the top. I make a circle wreath again. I'm going to put that same color bow because I do want these to coordinate and then glue that at the top. Yeah. 
this is an important step I wanted to draw on little windows on these popsicle sticks with a permanent marker but that does bleed really bad and it would have looked like a mess if I would have just done it so I took the extra step to paint over these popsicle sticks with some Mod Podge and that just kind of seals it over and gives it like a clear coating so that whenever I do draw on these with um, permanent marker now it's not going to bleed I am doing the same thing with the snow I really piled it on the roof I think that really makes it pop and look really fun and cute so then it was time to move on to the windows you can see that I just picked out a straight edge just this is an envelope um, template and then using that for a guide I went around to make sure that I could get squares as even as possible but I was thinking if you didn't want to do this extra step you actually could just use like black vinyl and cut out little even squares or maybe even cut out um, stickers of Dollar Trees to get the same effect. On the doors, I didn't want to take the time to create the four tiny little windows, so I did make them two larger squares, but it does really coordinate nice together, and I still think it came out really pretty. I did go over some of the permanent marker with a little bit of black paint to really make it more bold and some of my permanent marker just I felt like the permanent marker wasn't shading in as dark by the time that I got to the end uh, but I still think it turned out really good I, I took some more of the snow and put it alongside the doors and the windows I started off easy I got a little bit more brave and then started putting snow over the windows but I'm so happy that I did that I feel like it really makes it coordinate all nice together and it really flows with how the snow looks like it is going over the entire front of the little house and then once again stacking up some little uh, tower blocks for the back so that I could make this stand up I think it is so beautiful the two pieces together they just coordinate so nice even though they are different they star the same but just a really awesome way to get to use up the little gingerbread houses Thank you all so much for coming along and crafting with me today. These projects are definitely at the top of my list. They were so much fun to make. And like I said, I might keep going and adding little buildings on into my village, but I think they turned out adorable. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these was your favorite, the little barn or the house, or if you have any ideas of what you would like to make a different building in the future, I would love to know and what you would like to see next on my channel. I hope you guys are having a good day and having fun decorating for Christmas or getting ready to decorate. I know we are, even if you wait till after Thanksgiving, we are getting super close to Thanksgiving, so it is coming. And I hope you all are having a lot of fun thinking about that or putting that up. I haven't got my tree up yet, but it's something I would like to do in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to wait a little bit later because we are still kind of building on our house. So stuff is everywhere. But I am still cranking out a ton of content. And I'll link some more Christmas videos down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.